welcome back to another anatomy tutorial where we are going to be talking about the anatomy of the thoracic cavity of the gut. So in this tutorial we will look at the anatomy of the lung in situ. We will also look at the structures which we can see inside the thoracic cavity. While in the next tutorial we will remove the lung and talk about other structures inside the thoracic cavity. So to be able to see all structures inside the thoracic cavity, we remove the forelimb completely as you can see here. We also remove the ribs, all ribs, you know, from the left side. As you can see, we kept actually just the first rib here and the last rib and removed all other ribs as you can see. The lungs are elastic air-filled organs occupy most of the thoracic cavity. Dorsally here we can see the dorsal border of the lung. Cranially here this is the apex of the lung, left lung in this case of course. Caudally here the lung leads on the diaphragm and form the diaphragmatic surface. Each lung has a costal surface adjacent to the thoracic wall. Uh, the other surface there is the mediastinal surface toward the mediastinum. And here we can see the diaphragmatic surface which leads against the surface of the diaphragm. This is the diaphragmatic surface as you can see. In small ruminants, the left lung is divided into the cranial, this is the cranial lobe, and this is the caudal lobe of the left lung. The cranial lobe is further subdivided into a caudal part and a cranial part. So the cranial lobe has two parts, the cranial, so this is the cranial part of the cranial lobe of the left lung. And this is the caudal part of the cranial lobe of the left lung. The cranial and the caudal parts of the cranial lobe of the left lung, they form together the cardiac notch, which allows the pericardium to contact the lateral thoracic wall. And here we can see the heart located inside the pericardium. In contrast, the caudal lobe of the left lung is not subdivided, as you can see here. In general, the lungs are fixed in place by their attachment to the trachea, blood vessels, and by the pulmonary ligaments, dorsal medially. So, if you want to see the pulmonary ligament, go dorsal medially from the caudal lobe of the left lung, of course the same for the right lung, here we can see the pulmonary ligament which connects the lungs with the mediastinum and the diaphragm, as you can see here. The diaphragm, this respiratory muscle, has four portions, lumbar, costa, sternal, and central tendon. Here we can see the muscular part of the diaphragm surrounds the central tendon. This here, in the middle of the diaphragm, we can see the central tendinum or the central tendon. The diaphragm is innervated by the phrenic nerve, which provides both sensory and motoric innervation of the diaphragm as well as sensory innervation to the pericardium. So here we can see the phrenic nerve moving on the base of the heart. The phrenic nerve originates from the ventral branches of the caudal cervical nerves. So this is here the phrenic nerve. And just for your information, dorsal to the phrenic nerve in this area we can find another nerve. This is the vagus nerve.
And as we mentioned the vagus nerve, let's look at the uh, branches of the vagus nerve inside the thoracic cavity. So the vagus nerve passes through the thoracic inlet, as you can see, caudally. When the vagus nerve reaches the uh, arctic arch, it gives off the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. And then it moves caudally and medially on the base of the heart, as you can see here. And uh, behind the lung there, it moves on the lateral surface of the sevigus. Where it gives off uh, two branches, the dorsal and the ventral vagal branches. As we described before, the lung is fixed in its position to the mediastinum by the pulmonary veins and arteries by the primary bronchus uh, uh, they enter this structure enter the lung through what's called the root of the lung or radix pulmonis here we can see the heart located inside the pericardium And as you can see, the pericardium is also fixed here to the sternum by the sternopericardiac ligament. This one here. So here, this is the pericardium. This sac surrounds the heart. From the heart, as you can see over there, dorsally, we have the aorta which forms at the beginning the aortic arch and moves caudodorsally to form the thoracic aorta from the aorta the first branch we can see here is the brachiocephalic trunk from the brachiocephalic trunk the first two branches are the left and right subclavian arteries so this is the subclavian artery which moves after giving some branches toward the forelimb and supply the forelimb with blood. The first branch we can see here is the vertebral artery which moves inside the transverse canal of the cervical vertebra. Here inside the thorax and caudoventrally we can see the internal thoracic artery. After that, the left subclavian artery moves outside the thorax cavity, gives some branches there before it uh, continues as axillary artery to forward the forelimb. There, caudodorsally inside the thorax cavity, in this area here, we can see the aortic hiatus through which the aorta, the thoracic duct, and the atsicos vein moves or passes. This is the atsicos vein. Here it's important to mention that both left and right atsicos veins are present in small ruminants, while the left one drains directly into the coronary sinus, while the right one drains actually to the cranial vena cava. Before we finish this tutorial, I would like to show you the lung of the small ruminants. Uh, in the right view, we can see the right lung divided here into cranial lobe, middle lobe, and uh, the caudal lobe. The accessory lobe is located between the two lungs, so we cannot see it in this view.